Hey, hey, it's your boy, uh, the Anti-Swag Corporation here. Welcome to my new channel, the Anti-Swag Corporation. So Dead by Daylight is a bit stale right now, I, I won't lie. So today, let's turn to Dead by Daylight game clones that bought us gems such as Dead Before Daylight 2020. Just letting you know that the people that made these games have also made games such as Chungus <laughs> Rampage 2020. You know the game that has realistic graphics gameplay? Lord have mercy, I'm about to bust. And reviews that say that this is the most amazing game ever and if you hate the game, you should be burning in hell. Yeah, we're basically looking at those games again. The games that that could have been Dead by Daylight if Shaldi wasn't a melody in my head. Oh, okay, that was a bad joke. <laughs> but anyway, welcome to the worst Dead by Daylight game clones, part two. So Haunted Fields, according to them, is a 4v1 online team-based multiplayer horror survival game, which obviously is just the fancy way of saying Dead by Daylight. But you have to note that in order to play this game, you have to be a certain type of person. In the description, it reads, Maybe you've always dreamed of being a cause of nightmares, haunted dreams of the darkest fear like a Rip Friday killer. Nah, to be honest, I always thought of myself as a Tuesday killer. But you know what? Everyone likes Friday, so I give that one a tick. If 13 is your favorite number, you will enjoy these haunted fields. Well, my favorite number is 8, but if you add the remaining brain cells left in my brain after playing this game, it adds up to 13, so that's another tick. Jump scare games with spooky gameplay is your favorite game genre? Then take the side of a bloodthirsty, disgusting psychopath with the saw. Okay, so from the screenshots of the game, the killer is clearly wielding a scythe and not a saw, but you know what? Everyone gets a little bit confused. It's a, it's just a nitpicky thing, and for, and for that, you know what? I'll give him a tick. Ding, ding, ding. That's three ticks. That means I'm eligible to play this fucking game. I like how these games have clearly fake reviews too. Like this one says, awesome. This game could be a game changer to multiplayer online horror games if the game adds new character maps and fan favorite more. Great job. Five stars, by the way. <laughs> and the game dev just replies to that fake comment. It's the exact same as me going on to my own YouTube videos and typing, wow, this is the greatest video on YouTube. Keep it up, Demi. And then me replying with, thanks, no worries, will do. Please keep watching my videos. So the game starts off with an intro cinematic, just like the one in Dead by Daylight. However, I reckon this one beats Dead by Daylight cinematic any day. What time did you say Lewis and Leonard were arriving? They should both be here at any time. <laughs> <laughs> they use text to speech voices for the characters. Oh, that's legendary. I'll go look for them. It's too dark. Maybe you should stay here with us and wait for them. Also, this one character walks for like 10 minutes before anything happens. to be only escape. It's like Dead by Daylight went up to them and we're like, yeah, you can look at my work, just don't copy it word by word. So if you want to play a survivor, well, you can't because you have to sit through a 45 second ad. <laughs> when you're finally done watching that shit, you're able to choose your survivor from this wide range of randomly generated bot characters, all of which apparently have different and unique abilities and weaknesses. Let me tell you right now, I've played as all of them and none of them have any different abilities or weaknesses. They're all fucking garbage. Me personally, I mean Leonard, simply because look at the top of his head oh and this confused the hell out of me too it says waiting for players on the bottom left and random people started joining and so for a second i thought wow people actually played this game and then i got a lobby pretty quickly but then it hit me that these guys were probably just fucking bots because no way in hell did i get a game on this quicker than i get on a game as popular as dead by daylight seriously lobbies in dead by daylight are horrendous please Please fix that. So if I had to describe playing Survivor on this game, it would be Totem Cleansing Simulator because that's all you do. You just cleanse totems for like 10 minutes. Meaning your useless teammates on Dead by Daylight would love this game. After you cleanse a totem, you either get a gear or a key. For the gear, it's used to open an exit gate. You need to collect a certain amount of gears to open both gates. But Demi, how many gears do you need to power an exit gate? Three? Five? Fucking 13! EACH! You need 13 gears on each gate to get anything open. They sure love this fucking number. But I get it, that's fine. It's, it's a long game and I completely understand that. And I wouldn't have minded that if this didn't happen every 30 seconds. <laughs> yep, 
There's jump scares. That was pretty annoying, right? I probably made you shit yourself. Now imagine that happening every 30 seconds when playing a survivor. That's what I had to go through. If you get a key on the other hand, you can unhook yourself, but they're pretty useless because the killer is somehow programmed to not hunt you down unless you're the last survivor standing. Meaning, there is no point to using a key. You just have to constantly cleanse totems until you find a gear. But you can also run right into him and then you'll get caged, but what's the point in doing that? Why would you purposely run into the killer unless you were me and were just finding any source of entertainment from this game? Also, nice point system, by the way. I wonder what this reminds me of. <laughs> Playing killer, by the way, is way better. Simply because there's no jump scares, but everything else is still pretty trash. When you play, they expect you to place down these traps because apparently if a survivor walks through it, you can see them. But again, there is no point because the survivors are bots programmed to appear in front of you every couple of seconds. Hello. Oh, what the fuck? Where'd you come from? D she just she just appeared out of nowhere. What? Oh, and remember this guy from Dead Before Daylight 2020? He's fucking back. <laughs> So that's it, that's literally all there is to kill her. You just have to wait in one spot and all the survivors come to you and you win the game. 7 out of 10, let's move on. Now Grandpa Ice Cream Escape Game isn't really a Dead by Daylight clone, but for obvious reasons, <clears throat> I'm going to talk about it only very briefly. Grandpa Ice Cream Escape Game is really self-explanatory. You just have to escape your ice cream, Grandpa. I don't- I don't know. So there's an actual lore to this game. Basically, you live with your grandpa and he eats toxic ice cream, which somehow turned him into the clown from Dead by Daylight. Now to play this game, all you have to do is explore the house and find random objects that you can pick up to throw at the clown. Oh, and please don't mind those ads at the top of the screen. I tried to get rid of it, but... You, you can't, you, you, you just can't escape the ads. So as soon as you find the items, all you have to do is find Grandpa and run away from him so that you can throw the items at him. Bruh. And that's it. That's how you win the game. Basically, you just throw shit at the clown until he dies or until you die. It's... <laughs> What am I doing with my life? There are a couple of positives in this game. For example, if you're playing Dead by Daylight and you get a toxic clown in your game, you can just take it out on him on here. But that's not all. There's a second game mode. And it's actually kinda addicting. This mode is called Car Mode, and basically... Yep, you run over a bunch of clowns in a car. The controls are absolute dog shit, but I kept playing it because it was- It was kind of addictive. You gain points by killing the clown, and you lose health by knocking the shit on the road. This includes tree, dog shit, and barrel. You can also gain life by touching the gas canister. If you want to try this abysmal thing out, try and beat my high score of 2400. But anyway, I give it a 10 out of 10, well done. We got a- we got a new clown game on our hands, ladies and gents. These developers just really love fucking clowns. So identity kill a clown or kill a clown identity, the- the- the, the screenshots and the title are just completely different, so I- I don't know what to call it, but it's another 1v4 survivor versus killer game. Now I don't know if this is a Dead by Daylight or Identity V ripoff, but you'll see what I mean soon. For now we'll just say- we'll just say both. In the description it reads, get yourself into this exciting adventure of killer identity. One of the best asymmetrical horror mobile games there is. Clearly this person knows his place because the best asymmetrical mobile horror game there is is Dead Before Daylight 2020. Enjoy the mysterious storyline and amazing gameplay. The 1 vs 4 combat is a stupefying mystery action game. Stupefying? Is, is that an actual word or is that a fucking Harry Potter spell? Oh no, it's an actual word. Well, well, well I feel silly. The intense battle starts where the weird gothic killer starts to kidnap survivors from the squad. Shit, not the boys from the Call of Duty squad, man. Fuck. The scary clown crazy horror killer straps the hostages to the chair and uses exceptionally terrible methods to kill them in a clown horror night. My body is going to fight off flight mode right now just trying to read this. Sure has something to do with the underworld. <laughs> yes, I do believe that this game was sent by the devil himself to torture me. <laughs> it's as if the obscure mysterious killer has taken over the air of dark and will be dead by light of the day. Oh, there it is. Invade the clown horror night and make the squad dead before daylight. <laughs> 
This game is just referencing all the games, man. It's referencing Identity V, Dead by Daylight, and Dead Before Daylight 2020. You know what? That sold me. Let's play this game. So as soon as you set up this game, you get introduced to- Can we use your data to tailor ads for you? The moment you click play as well is the moment you find out that you can only play as killer. I found a review that dates back to 2018. That means the game has been out for almost two years now, and we have yet to see Survivor. Please give us Survivor. Anyway, when you play the game, the first thing you get introduced to is fucking Minecraft music. Am I chilling on Minecraft on a cool 2012 night, or am I playing an asymmetrical horror game? Playing killer is very simple. All you have to do is knock down these bot of survivors before they complete 10 of the gems? I don't know. Again, this would be fine if this didn't happen every time a survivor touched a gen. And don't worry, it's not a jump scare, so relax. Imagine if you verse real people in this game and they just spam the gens. That would just be AIDS. So after you knock a survivor down, you carry them like they're the fucking love of your life. <laughs> like how romantic is this shit? You then place them into coffins and then this happens. Black man! So much for strapping them into chairs. <laughs> you have to do this four times and it's the easiest thing in the world because as I said, the survivors are just mindless bots. Oh, and don't worry if they wiggle out too because you just get stuck in the carrying animation and if you approach a coffin, you can still put them in there even though they're long gone. <laughs> That's literally all there is to this game. It's fucking shit to me. Anyway, I went back into the game just to see what happens if the survivors win. I had to kill a lot of time, so I explored the map, and I found a lot of good things. <laughs> First of all, the club or the weapon of the killer is missing a texture. The killer's eyes from the front are completely see-through, even though there are no holes in the back of his head. If you walk off this plank, you could literally make the killer float on top of the roof. <laughs> If you go inside this building, you'll notice that there's a little door off to the side where a fire hydrant is half the size of it. Who the fuck can fit through this? The survivors are clearly bigger than it. So why is it here? What, what is the purpose of this door? The survivors don't actually have to be on the gens to be working on them. They can just float away like this. And this, this is just the best thing ever. When the survivors finally do all the gens, the gate opens and you as a killer can walk out of the map. I'm not kidding, you could literally fall off the fucking map. Oh my fucking god. And that's it, that, that's all I could find for this game. 2 out of 10, I almost had a stroke. Look, I'll be honest with you, the games were fucking terrible. But in its terribleness, we found entertainment. And that's what games are supposed to do, right? Entertain us. It's games as bad as these that help us appreciate the games we already consider good, no matter how many bugs or bad updates we get. <laughs> Dead by Daylight. However, one thing I'm still not on board with is when you're playing the games and an ad just pops off halfway through. Check out gcards.net for different gift card boxes such as Steam, Xbox, PlayStation, and Amazon. It's amazing that you can buy an Amazon box for only $7.99 and win up to $500 gift cards. If you're Australian, just like yours truly, the site will automatically give you gift cards in your currency. And every spin gives you a guaranteed prize. Check out gcards from the link in the top of the description below. Anyway, your boy wants to make a part 3 of this, so if you find any Dead by Daylight ripoffs and no Identity V doesn't count, then send them my way. Have a good one, guys. Extra, extra, come and get your demi plays. I said, extra, extra, come and get your demi plays. Get your daily dosage on this channel every day. I said, get your daily dosage on this channel every day.